I'm here at Anything in Stained Glass in Frederick, Maryland, where owner Paula gives us an overview of glass cutting tools and demonstrates some great cutting tips. Paula and her husband Dave are the owners of Anything in Stained Glass. Stained glass is typically sold in the United States as hobby sheets, and these are cut down from larger sheets. There is a vast array of colors and textures and the cost is very competitive with other mosaic materials. Let's begin with an introduction to various glass cutting tools. There are a variety of different glass cutters that you can use. Each one of them is your personal preference. We have the Thomas cutter, which you can put through your fingers to guide. This is considered the comfort cutter and uh, the custom cutter. And the reason why it's the custom cutter is you can take this off and move this up or down based on how you would like to hold it. This is called the comfort cutter because it has a thin barrel to thicker. This is just your brass straight cutter. And then my favorite is the pistol grip cutter. I really like the pistol grip because it allows the person to have even consistent pressure and to hold the glass cutter perpendicular. When scoring glass, there's three secrets to having a successful score. The first secret is you want to make sure that your glass cutter is perpendicular to the surface of the glass. The reason why is the glass is a lot of teeny tiny little fibers. When you're scoring the top of the glass, what happens is the fibers go down and create a V. If your glass cutter is not perpendicular to your piece of glass, what happens is your V shifts. As your score will run, it will hesitate, and then it will go to the right or the left. The second secret is that oil is your best friend. I prefer lamp oil because the purpose of the oil is when these uh, fibers come apart, glass appears to be a solid to us, but you actually want to think about it as more of a liquid. So when you score the surface of your glass, the fibers come apart, create this V, and then they want to go back together. The purpose of your oil is to fill in that V to keep them apart until you actually break the glass. If I score the glass with too much pressure, what you will notice is that the edge of the glass has a lot of little bumps, which I call gears. This means that you had too much pressure applied to the glass. When you're using an art glass or a handmade glass, what will happen is the pressure will actually uh, find flaws in the glass or character in the glass and will break in the wrong direction. So now we're going to show a little lighter pressure. Can you see how the edge of the glass is now nice and smooth and shiny? That is actually what you would like to achieve. You want a nice smooth edge. The reason why the hard pressure caused the gear is when you're scoring, you're digging your cutter in too deeply into the piece of glass. So what your V is doing is opening and closing. There are two ways to cut glass. One is to push your glass cutter away from you and the other is to pull it. When you're cutting a shape, you always want to push your glass cutter away because do you see the little uh, rectangle? That is going to be your guide. So what you do is you line it up against your line and you follow your line. So the rectangle will actually be riding over top of your line. A curiosity that people have is why do we have two different heads on our pistol grip cutter? This head, which is a thinner head, is called a pattern head. The purpose of the pattern head is to be able to do curved cuts. This head is called a straight or a broad head. The purpose of the broad head is to do a straight cut. Now as you can see, when I'm going to cut straight, I'm actually going to pull the glass cutter towards me. The reason why I'm going to pull the glass cutter towards me is I'm going to have my finger on the cutter, my hands pressing down on the ledge and come towards me. The, the nice thing is, is that these heads are actually interchangeable. You can own one pistol grip cutter and just change out the head to the pattern or the broad depending on what you're working on.
A great trick for mosaics for cutting a lot of squares is I would hash each side. Then I would take my lamp oil and I would just coat my, my sheet. Remember the important thing about the lamp oil is that it's going to fall into each one of your scores and keep the score open so that it'll be easier to break it apart. Now we're going to talk about different pliers that are used with stained glass. One is a running plier. The way that the running plier works is it has a sad face. When you have scored your glass, you've created the V. The purpose of the running plier is to put pressure on the bottom of the V and open up the piece of glass. When you're using your running pliers, what you want to make sure of is where you're actually applying it on your piece of glass. If you take the running plier and choke it up too far, what happens is you're running your score in the two directions, which will cause it to break at this location. So when you score, you want to make sure that your running plier is at the end. Another common question we get is this screw. What is the purpose of it? The purpose of the screw is when you screw it in, it will actually allow you to not close your running pliers completely. The reason why people use this is if they have a heavy hand, they won't be able to press really hard and break their glass. However, I teach to unscrew this so that you actually have to use the plier with your own pressure. These are two different uh, running pliers by two different manufacturers. The difference between them is this running plier is larger in the hand and does not have a spring. So typically when you first get it, it might be a little bit stiff to open and close. The Dragon running pliers, however, has a spring which makes it easier to open and close and also is smaller in the hand. Another tool that's very useful is called a breaker grosier. And what that means is this top area you'll see is a straight line. The way that you would wear, use a breaker is you would make a small score. It's used for small pieces that you may not want to have to use your running pliers with. You would take the breaker, which is the straight side. You would go up to your score, and I always teach to pull out a little bit and down to reduce chipping. So you pull out and down to get a clean cut. Another great trick that I would like to show you is how to cut an inside curve. Whenever we have a pattern that has a deep inside curve, we tend to hesitate. The key is that you want to make sure that your cutter is perpendicular to the piece of glass and that you move your hips, okay? So I'm right-handed and I find that it's easier for me to curve my glass to the left. So I'll put my lamp oil, I'll put my glass cutter down. You want to take your running pliers and choke up comfortably so that the full running plier is on the glass, but so that it's not too far up and squeeze gently. Now did you hear it click? We do not want to squeeze the glass, the running pliers again because what will happen is it will run straight. Now what we do is we go to the other side. Do you hear it click again? So now what happened is your score has run and score has run. Now that we have already opened this part, we can then choke up a little more and squeeze on either side. The way the grinder works is you want to make sure that you have plenty of water. If you see a white buildup here, you would need to definitely add water so that you're not chipping your glass. When you use the grinder, you put the glass onto the surface. You don't want to hold it up in this direction because the grinder will then grind on an angle. Lay it on the surface and then just go back and forth, left and right, to shape your piece. One of the most common glass tools in the mosaic realm is the wheeled nipper, and hands down my favorite is the La Ponit brand. I want to thank Paula for sharing her knowledge. Be sure to check out our other video with Paula, Buying Stained Glass Online. It'll save you a ton of money and headaches. And remember, 
Life's a mosaic. You pick the pieces.